aging can be delayed, aging can be stopped, aging can be reversed in several ways. This is our words by Neil Barzilai, Director of the Institute for Aging Research, Albert Einstein College of Medicine, New York, and Director of the Rolf Glenn Center for the Biology of Human Aging Research. He is one of the leading experts on aging. He believes instead of treating disease one by ones as they come, we should treat their root cause first, aging itself. Neil Barzina is among the 60 experts participating in Milan Longevity Summit, in which uh, they will talk about the cutting-edge research to slow down the aging process. Today at Medica TV, we have the honor and pleasure to host Dr. Nir Barzilai, connected from New York. Metformin is often mentioned in your studies. Could you explain how this drug, commonly used, as you say, uh, to treat diabetes also in Italy can influence the aging process and is it currently used with this indication could there be any side effects because also in this case if we have metformina uh, is uh, it's wonderful because we already have it right exactly so I, I want a, a brief history first of all Metformin is an extract of a French lilac. Um, so you would say it's actually nutraceutical, but it's not because it's modulated. It's mildly modulated. So it's not the extra. If, if you go and pick this flower and eat it, it's not, it's good, it's not going to be dead. Unfortunately. <laughs> but, well, it's my, it might be cheaper to buy metformina than to go okay. and pick flowers. Okay, okay. But, but, um, uh, the, the, I, I think the point is when uh, in the last century, be, be, starting in 1920s, people, mothers, grandmothers recognize the this this French lilac, these extracts, this metformin, as something that has benefits. For example, they give it to people with arthritis, or they give it to people um, to prevent flu or even to prevent malaria. And it was effective, but at that time, mm. they noticed that when they give it to people who have diabetes, it lowers their glucose. So metformin became a medication for diabetes, but it really didn't start like that because it had all those effects. Yeah. And when people with diabetes were taking it for 70, 80 years, it, when studies were done, people noticed that people who are diabetic on metformin compared to other drugs like insulin or sulfonylurea, other things that you use for diabetes, those people had less heart disease and less cancers and less cognitive decline and Alzheimer's and they even died less. Mm. So, uh, we actually got, and at that time, nobody thought about aging. Biology of aging came after metformin. Yeah. So uh, people said, well, that's a great drug. And, and actually, this was doing that, although it didn't do better for the glucose control. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's not that it's because the glucose were lower. Uh, it's because something else happened. Okay. So... Meanwhile, when we develop this concept of biology of aging and we have what we call the hallmarks of aging, what we can measure uh, and is important, what, what goes wrong with aging and we can fix, and we see how metformin works on cells or on animals, and we see the same thing, that when we give metformin to animals or to cells, it repairs all the hallmarks of aging and makes the animal healthier. Yeah. Um, so so the, it's in the last few years that it became apparent. But you're asking why we're not taking metformin. And uh, the, re the reason for me to, to uh, why, how I explain it is because the FDA, which is the Food and Drug Administration, there's something like that in Italy. IFA. <laughs> IFA, it's called. They, yeah. they don't approve aging as a target because the science comes ahead of regulation. 
Yeah. So what I'm doing, I'm the scientific director of the American Federation for Aging Research, and we are driving a study that we're going to start this year. This year. To show, yeah, to show the FDA that this one drug is going to change to prevent a lot of diseases of aging. Um, uh, but so, in, in humans, in in in, uh, in people. Yeah, yeah, in people. We're, oh. we're going to take 3,000 people between 65 and 79 years of age, and half of them are going to get metformin, half are going to get placebo, and we're going to monitor a cluster of disease, cardiovascular disease and cancer and cognitive decline and Alzheimer and death all together. Because for us, aging causes those diseases. So you get one point for each one. And yeah. we're going to show that we're going to delay those diseases or prevent them. Yeah. When when did you think you start to the study? Do you know exactly? But, but I, want to say, oh, I don't know the date. We're going to start, you know, 2024. But <laughs> yeah. uh, but I, I just want to say that legally, okay, this is a drug, this is a drug that we want to repurpose, okay? Yeah. We know that there's no safety issue, that there's no efficacy issue. We know a lot of studies that were it's done. Because it's already on the market. Yeah. So in this case, every doctor, okay, can give their patient metformin to prevent aging. People are giving metformin for women who have polycystic ovary disease. Uh, they give it pe to people who have prediabetes. And also, and really I have to mention that uh, during COVID, there are nine papers around the world. I think one of them was from Italy. Yeah. That showed that people on metformin have, they die less and they go to the hospital less. Oh. And there was a clinical trial, you know, this was only association, but there was a clinical trial that was published in New England Journal of Medicine. It's like our Bible last year or in 2020. 22 that showed that if you give it to people within three days of having COVID, it prevented 40% of hospitalization, 40% of death, and like 60% of long COVID. Yeah. And it just shows you metformin is not about diabetes. It's also about infectious diseases yeah. and other marks of aging. Yeah. It, it seems like a panacea. We, 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 Uh, usually tell in Italian as a, a miraculous, a, a special uh, uh, molecule that can uh, give the solution for all. Right. But, but you know, when a, a lot of time when we think of panacea, we panacea. think of a disease, you know, how we cure a disease. We wish we had panacea for cancer. Yeah. Here we're talking about prevention of yeah. diseases. Okay. Yeah. If you have the diseases, then, you know, if you take it, maybe you prevent the next disease, but we want for us, aging is preventable. Okay. Because aging drives diseases. So we have to give the drug before the disease start in order to. So I passed my 50 years. I can. Okay. You also look good. <laughs> <laughs> you are so kind. So I can get metformina by myself. So, okay. First because, of all, uh, because I, actually it's very difficult to find a physician uh, in Italy um, who give me metformina without indication. Okay. So do you think that it's uh, um, advisable to take metformina by ourselves um, standing with what you do say no no we need we need the prescription but let let me first say about the age yeah if not everything that's good for you when you're young is good for you when you're old okay for example when you're young you need a lot of cholesterol for the ovaries the testes the brain but if you have lots of cholesterol when you're old you get into trouble right so it's not it's antagonistic but also Not every drug that's good for you when you're old is good for you when you're young. Okay. All the studies on metformin were done on people over the age of 50, okay? Now, you're the age of 50, but you that's your chronological age. 
I don't know what's your biological age. So, because if you give metformin to younger people, mm. for example, it lowers growth hormone. It's good to lower growth hormone in old because when you're old, you're starting to break down and you don't want to spend your energy on growing, right? Okay. So it's good. But when you're young, when whenever you have more growth hormone, it's better. Mm. For men, metformin can lower testosterone. It's okay to lower testosterone when you're old, but when you're young, you no. don't want to. Yeah. Okay. So when you said I'm 50, I just want to say, if, if you said 50 and I knew that you're older, I would say, yeah, you can consider seeking metformin. Now, uh, doctors are, are not educated. You know, somebody who's your age and know about metformin never heard about aging. So we need to do the education. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. If you want to get metformin, you can go to Amazon in the United yeah, States. No. You can Amazon and get a, a metformin for a dollar a day, yeah. which is not 10 times what it costs. But, but you know, you can, you yeah. can get it. You, do you know something about uh, possible side effects of this? Yeah. So, um, so the, the, the good thing about metformin is all the side effects are in the first week. Okay. okay? And they happen to some, maybe a lot, but not to most. And mainly they go away, but three to 6% of the people have diarrhea and this diarrhea goes after a week and that's not good for them. Then they have to stop metformin because metformin is not absorbed from their guts. Okay. 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 But if you ask generally, what's the major side effect of, of metformin, it's longevity. You would leave <laughs> Okay. And and maybe it's a best side effect. Maybe you cannot afford to live long, right? Yeah. What dosage? The well, the the dosage that we're uh, using for the study that we're doing is fifteen hundred milligrams. Okay. okay. Which is day, which is per, per day per, per day. day. Okay. Okay. The study did you mention before is the tame study targeting aging with metformin. Is that okay. correct? Okay, okay. So um, we we will wait for this result with very curiosity. Besides methformin, are there other anti-aging molecules or experimental interventions that you find particularly promising for slowing down or reversing aging? Right. So we well, look. We're Re reversing aging is semantic. It's something we want to do. It's something we're working on, but it's not available. What we're doing is more blocking, blocking aging. Okay. Reversing um, is too much. Re reversing, we can uh, reverse in some cases, some aspects of aging, but it's not truly, you know, this idea of fountain Every of youth, you go, in, yeah, you go in the pool and you come out young. Is, we're not there yet, and I think it's going to be very difficult. In fact, I think from a reversing aging point of view, I think what 50 years from now will get a shot mm. when you're we're 20 years old, and it will always erase the aging and will repeat it a year after year and will stay young. This is going to be easier <laughs> than than to to get us old and then mm. a, 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 and and then do it. So. Uh, but uh, there are a lot of supplements that are being tested. Um, and there also there are other drugs but, but metformin that are FDA approved and have showed both to be important for aging in the sense that we know how they work for aging. We give them to animals. The animals live uh, healthier and for longer time. And in humans, we see that although they're giving to one disease, like when metformin is giving for diabetes, if they're giving to one disease, they also affect other diseases and overall mortality. So there are four drugs like that. Wow. Uh, we actually upgrade this list and I just finished upgrading, it's, it's published. And the new drug that came to the list is the drugs for diabetes and weight loss 
mm. or Zempic. I don't know which is the brand yeah, that yeah. you use in Italy. Yeah. Uh, because because uh, obesity drives aging. Okay. So so for example, uh, again, I'll give the example of COVID. When you were over the age of 80, you had almost 200 times more chances of dying than if you're in 20, okay? But if you were obese, you had eight, eight times more chances of dying at any age. Yeah. Uh, so obesity drives aging, but Ozempic has effects beyond the obesity. Even when you give uh, Ozempic to young animals, they live longer, yeah. okay, without changing their weight. So we, we believe, and, and by the way, our first, when I went to the field of aging and I was among the first, mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the test that we do is we take animals and some of them ate whatever they wanted and the other got 30 or 40% less to eat. Mm -hmm. Those that get, got less to eat, we call them caloric restriction, caloric restriction we call it. Those who are calorically restricted were much, much healthier and lived 40% longer, you know, really, really a long time longer. So we were in our, through the years, we were looking for the calorie mimetic, what, what makes similar to mm. caloric restriction, which we cannot do in humans. And this is the drug, okay? Yeah. okay. So, so we think that this drug uh, used wisely and when it's available and when it's cheaper mainly is going to be an important tool for us to target aging so also as uh, mm, cioè, mm, it should be used also by people not with um, overweight yeah. um so i i we, we, yeah we don't have guidelines for that and and if if people who are, there are lots of longevity doctors, okay, and we are actually educating them, and what what we suggest if you have a patient that want to do care about their health and want also some supplements, then if they're overweight or obese, you can give them Ozempic for a few weeks, so that they lose their weight, and then you can put them on metformin, okay, okay. things like that, okay. 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 So how, how many times and stuff, we don't know. It's kind of new. We're learning it. 